Back at Snappy Tomato Pizza, Coach Jason James joins us. Coach, when you were coming in, is snow still falling? Or are we? In... Oh, it's not too bad. No. Just cold basketball yeah. weather. Yeah, that's right. It is basketball weather. You're used to these cold uh, November days being from the St. Louis area. Coach, congratulations on what you called one of the biggest wins of your coaching career over UAB yesterday. Yeah, I mean, they're like I told Rhino after the game. They're all big. I mean, they're all important. But the way we played, it's. Obviously ranks right up there. I mean, you you, you got to try to perform in every game and every time out. You try to play well and try to execute, and sometimes it works out well for you. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, yesterday it worked out well for us, and we were able to uh, have a good game. Everybody saw the result. Yeah, we carried the game on the radio. I was watching the video feed on on the Internet, and you, re you truly controlled the game, Coach. I mean, it was a game plan that worked from the beginning, and you shot well early on. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it wasn't a fluke. I mean, you, it, it's, a, it's been great because a lot of people are saying, man, congratulations and great game and, you know, we're so happy and, and how do we win that one and all that stuff. Well, it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't like we went in there and they played really, really bad and we got lucky. I mean, we trailed for a total of about 30 seconds in the whole game. We jumped on them early. We were able to guard their stuff. We were able to execute our stuff. So I wouldn't uh, look at the game as – Man, that, that hardly ever happens. I mean, if we played them again, the outcome would be similar in my mind if we could execute the same way. I agree. And there was one play, and you'll have to help me with my memory, but you throw it inside, you kick it back outside, you go back inside, and you score on them. And I think that's just old-fashioned basketball. Yeah, right? it's yeah. not rocket science. Uh, I promise you that if it was, I, I definitely wouldn't be doing it if it was rocket science. Uh, we we have a we have an advantage against most teams throwing the ball inside, and we want to continue to do that. And our post players are really really good scoring around the basket. They're getting more comfortable in our stuff. That's got to be our first option. And when it is, it opens up everything else. And and that's what happened yesterday. It wasn't a secret ingredient. It was just what we've been preaching to them the whole year. It finally clicked. Now the key is it's got to click again and again mm -hmm. and again, and, and that's the goal. That's the challenge. Skyhawks won the game 59-54, and that final score was actually closer than the game as the Skyhawks led by 11, 12, 10, 9, 10, 11 points most of the game. Coach, one thing that is surprising me is a young man who's stepping up of late, and that's Amari Minor. And, and watching what I saw on the video, he's stepping up defensively too. He's starting to step up in all phases, uh, to be honest with you. You know, me and Amari sat down, we kind of watched him film. We talked a little bit about how he needs to play. And, and we talked to our guys a lot about changing your behavior. You know, when coach jumps your tail, change your behavior from that behavior to something else. Do something different. Try to do what we're asking them to do or, or make a change. And sometimes young guys have a hard time with that, making that change. But Amari heard what we were saying, he accepted it, and he's starting to make a change in his behavior, and you're seeing it in his play. He had seven points, three assists, and three steals. Um, a player who didn't shoot a lot last year, uh, and and he was a scorer in high school, though, right? Yeah, he didn't shoot a lot last year, and we won't ask him to shoot a lot this year. That's, right. that's not his job. and we, okay. don't, we don't need him to score, and when he first got here, he had a hard time with that, but he's starting to accept that, and he's starting to kind of settle into that role, and what you won't see on the score sheet is of those three steals, the last one was probably in the last 45 seconds of the game. We were up three. He had a huge steal, went to the rim, scored, got fouled, and it went from three to six at a time when they were really starting to, to roll a little bit. They were on an eight, eight to one run, got back in the game. Mari just took a stand, got a steal, got to the rim, and uh, we were able to move forward. Showing some leadership as a sophomore there. Big, very important. Yeah. Very important, especially at the point guard spot. Libo's big again, 22 points, 7 of 14 from the field. They hit a couple of three-pointers. One was from way downtown. Gets to the free throw line six times, four rebounds, and, and had a solid game. He did. He had a Mike Libo game. Shot a good percentage. Uh, didn't take many bad ones. No, We've been bringing Mike off the bench the last few games so he could kind of see the game. He can kind of see his spots. He gets a better feel for it when he's on the bench, and that, and that showed in that game. We brought him in, he made his first couple, he actually missed his first couple, then got to the rim and made a layup, and then he settled into the game and played very well. What's what's interesting to me about him is that he's tough to guard. I mean, he can shoot, he can score from almost anywhere. I don't know, I like when I close my eyes sometimes, I think of what a shot chart would look like from player to player to player, and I kind of get an idea of where it would be for most players. For Libo, it could be anywhere. 
Yeah, he's a bona fide scorer. I mean, make no bones about it. He score in the morning, score in the evening. <laughs> That's what he does. You know, we kind of make a joke. Instant, instant offense, just add water is what it says on, on the package, <laughs> the instructions for him. I mean, he's not shy. We don't need him to be shy, but we need him to take good shots. And I think as he's gotten older, that's what he's gotten a bunch better at. I mean, he got 22 points last night on 14 shots. Right. And against Rochester, he scored 18 on 11 shots. And that's what we really focus on with Mike. If he can get – he's the type of player that can get a, a large number of points on a very minimum amount of shots, and he can get them in our offense. When he's getting stuff in our offense and his shots are good shots between 10 and probably 13, 14 – He's hard to defend. One thing he seems to be doing a little better this year, at least for me, is that he's finding his open teammates, too, particularly in the post. Is he better at that now than he was a year ago? Oh, there's no question about it. Uh. He, he's, I don't want uh, to say he's a playmaker because that's a whole different deal, but he sees the floor better, and he's starting to understand that the more he can help his teammates get open and his help his teammates score, the easier it's going to be for him to score. And that's kind of the idea of what we're trying to do. I mean, we want, we want guys to help each other. We don't, we don't want you to play basketball just worried about you. We want them to help each other, help your teammate get open, help your teammate score, because in turn, that's going to help your game blossom. And Mike's definitely bought into that. That's truly at the core of your philosophy offensively. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's right at it, man. We want to share it. And, we want to pass up good shots for great shots, and we, we want everybody to get a touch. I mean, ideally, you know, on offense every time, all five guys would touch it at least once. We know that's that that's not how it always works. but It did in the movie Hoosiers. Well, yeah, four <laughs> passes before anybody <laughs> shoots kind of thing. And uh, I got an uncle in Kansas City who actually told me I should uh, employ that philosophy, but I, I, I think my guys would. Picket fence, they coach. They kill me, yeah. Picket fence. Don't, so, get, don't get caught watching the paint dry. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I'm sure we had too many guys watching that paint, watching it dry, and probably trying to pick up the paint chips. So we can't, we can't do that. Of the 46 shots, then, do you go back and, and chart how many, uh, how many poor, or bad shot, poor shot selection there was? I guess. Yeah, there was probably 10. Okay. Uh, 10 or 12 that I remember. I know you're not happy with that, then. No, no, I'm not. Uh, we shot an, a solid percentage, 43. It could have been a lot better. Uh, in the first half, we shot 48, which was really good. Second half, we kind of rushed some stuff, and they were able to get back in the game. Some shots were rushed. They were able to get back in the game. A lot of those shots were at the end of the shot clock, and that's kind of the one thing that, that, that it's hard for our guys to understand, especially is that sometimes late in that shot clock, man, we'd rather take a shot clock violation than just throw a shot up there that may be a long rebound and get a run out. You know, if we can't get a good one, we'll try to get to the rim. And if we can't get one at the rim, we don't get a foul call, we'll live with that. But instead of throwing one up from half court where there's a long rebound, a tip, and there's so many different things that can happen, mm -hmm. sometimes it's better to just try to get to the rim, take a great shot, and the shot clock runs out, it runs out. That way at least we can set our defense. And I'm not advocating turning the ball over, but in some games there's a such thing as a good turnover. And I think Wednesday night you'll see that, not to move ahead, but there'll be such thing on Wednesday as a good turnover, whereas – if we can turn the ball over in the last second of the shot clock and it goes out of bounds, that'll be great for us. That means that team's not running up and down the floor getting layups and they're getting transition baskets and all that. We're able to set our defense. And uh, a lot of people don't understand, man, good turnover, what are you talking about? Well, at the end of the day, no turnover is really a good one, but if you got to have one, shot clock violation is the way to go. You know, that never has occurred to me, ever. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of what we, what we thought. You know, our, one of our philosophies going into Louisville was that you know, we'll run the shot clock all the way down to about one second and take the ball and just punt it in the stands. That way at least we can set our defense, <laughs> even if they, you know, want to press us or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, or if we got to pressure them, at least we can set our defense. Whereas if we take it to one and try to go one-on-one -on -one against Peyton Siva and he steals the ball from you, those are layups and dunks. Well, it, that's hard to defend layups and dunks when it's one on one uh, a minute ago, we were talking about poor shot selection. Um, if how many of those actually occur around the basket? Uh, I mean, if you looked at your the low shot, the low percentage shots that you take, how many are fifteen feet out, and how many are fifteen feet in? It'd probably be more of them are fifteen feet out. Definitely, probably what eighty percent? Yeah, maybe? I'd okay. probably say seventy-five, eighty percent. You know, saying that you get guys who are out of control around the paint and just throw it up because they think it's the cool thing to do at the time and you get other guys who want to put their head down and drive to the rim and then look up and they're underneath the basket those are all bad shots but most of them occur from 
about 15 feet and out. They cur off one or two bounces from the three-point line with hands in their face. You know, those are shots we have to avoid to be successful. One other thought on the UAB game. Another solid performance from your freshman, Miles Taylor. 13 points and 10 rebounds in 32 yeah, minutes. He's starting to figure it out, slowly but surely. Uh, starting to figure it out, just how to play, the speed of it. and uh, I was very... Uh, I was happy with the way he played. Mm -hmm. I really was. I mean, I was happy with, with uh, the way he battled. And, and I'll tell you a story about Miles, that, not to go too much farther, but at our game, Ted Hillary, as an official, one of the most renowned officials in the country, uh, Big 12, SEC, Conference USA, Big 10. He's probably got every certification you can imagine, been in it for a number of years. Uh, about six or seven minutes left in the game. Miles has been playing a good game. He's been getting fouled a little bit. Uh, but, but, you know, there were no calls. And he was just playing, just playing basketball. After a timeout, Ted came over to me. He said, you know what, number 33, he's a nice young man. Kind of in the heat of the battle, it was a good game. We were up 10, and he didn't have to do that. He's seen a number of young men. He's seen a number of great athletes. He's seen a number of terrible kids playing basketball. But for him to come over in the middle of the game and say, you know what, Number 33 is a nice young man. I mean, that meant a lot to me. And, and, and it was just the 40 minutes that he had interaction with Miles. But that just goes to show you what type of person he is. And he's starting to become a great player. Can I tell a story? If you'd um, like. We're at Mississippi State. And uh, in, in this situation, I'm close to the bench. I'm sitting just a couple seats down from you. Normally, we're on the other side at the Elam Center. But Miles comes over in transition from defense to offense or something. And you have something to say to him. I don't know what you said to him. You said three things to him. And his responses were, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, that's usually how it is. You know, don't get fooled. Sometimes they say, yes, sir, shall I shut up? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, but he, made, Miles he was getting back he in looks, transition. He was yeah. making eye contact with yeah, you, he does. and he, he heard does. everything you said. Yeah, and that, that blew that. me away. Yeah, he does do that. You know, that's, that's kind of one of the things that we teach him, but it's also one of the things that Miles came in with. Okay. Uh, we teach him to kind of, when a coach is talking to you, look in their eyes, just a matter of respect and we didn't have to get on Miles about that. He does that by nature, just kind of where he's from. But he, he is. He's you a nice tell, young man. Coach, there are some players, and you can watch a college game on TV tonight, and you see the coach is talking to the player, and the player's tuning them out. Yeah, and that drives me nuts, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, and, and we've had guys here like that, and I, I'm, not, I'm not a confrontational person, but I'm not afraid to call you out uh, on stuff like that because I would never – turn away from them when they talk to me mm -hmm. because I care about what they're saying and, and that's the idea if, if I wouldn't do that to you you shouldn't do it to me because there's a mutual respect I care about what you're asking me you should care about what I'm telling you or asking you yeah. well that impressed me and and and, and to think too he's getting down there to play offense and he's paying attention to you while he's in transition yeah it's always yeah. a good thing when your players pay attention to you I mean that's always <laughs> <laughs> something we try to build on. We don't want it to go but the you other know, way. As simple as that sounds, I mean, again, it's not the most common thing in the world. And I, I uh, feel sorry for the NBA coaches. I watch yeah. some because now they've got the, you've seen this, they've got the camera and the huddle or on the, and you can tell that player's not a bit more paying it's attention. A, it's a sad, sad day, Chris, when uh, coaches take something that small. Is it, it make it that big of a deal, big of an issue? You know, when I was playing, that was part of it. That was it. You you paid it when the coach talked. He was like E.F. Hutton, man. Everybody shut their mouth and they listened. Where nowadays it's just not like that, and and it's a sad, sad day where something that that small is not is 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 not taken for is 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 taken for granted. I should say it's something that people don't really pay attention to. And 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 I'll say this: we'll never deal with it here. I won't coach those guys. I mean. You can't pay attention. You can't be coached is what I call it. That's part of not being able to be coached. If you can't be coached, well, you need to go not be coached somewhere else. You know, I don't have time for it. and I admire you, and I've questioned you off the air about some of the decisions you've made, but you really you pay attention to the foundation details more than, than sometimes the big picture. I mean, you're, you're really involved in what's going on. I mean, yeah. I, saw, I, told, I saw you kick a guy or not off the, off the floor in practice because he wasn't hustling enough. Mm -hmm. I, he got back in there the next round, and he right. was hustling twice as much. Right. Well, to me, uh, there's something bigger than just winning games. I mean, it's the small, the foundation, the sum of our parts, everything together is bigger than just one part, and it's bigger than just winning games. UT Martin's always going to be bigger than uh, our All-Americans or our league championships. It's going to be about a program, and that's something we really want to build here. We don't want good teams. We don't want a team that, man, we'll be have a good team this year, and next year we'll see what happens. We want a good program that will stand the test of time, 
And to do that, you have to be rooted in a foundation. You have to be rooted in a philosophy that starts with loyalty and trust and hard work and toughness and togetherness. And that's what we base our stuff on. And from that, we branch out. Winning ball games is just, at the end of the day, it's just a small part of it. And that's why I was so proud of our guys yesterday. You know, we didn't worry about the score. Mm -hmm. We didn't look at the score and say, man, we're up eight. We're up nine. Man, we're up ten The Conference USA. We were just playing basketball. And the first possession of the game, there's a loose ball, and Amari Minor dives on it. And those of you who know Amari know that that's not in his character. He, he's kind of a cool cat. But he got on the floor for the ball. And it kind of made me think, maybe we are ready to play tonight. And we just played basketball. And, and that's got to be our deal from here on out. The score doesn't matter to us. We just got to play the right way. If we do that, we'll have a lot of fun this year, and there will be a lot of people who, who really enjoy watching us. Okay. Let's take a break. We'll come back and talk about the week ahead with Coach Jason James, live from Snappy Tomato Pizza on the Skyhawk Sports Network. <laughs> 